I should like someone to remember that there once lived a person named David Berger. I am 20 years old. Why are they going to destroy us when everything within me yearns for life? These are the final words that I will write to you, for I am to be shot tomorrow morning at dawn. These are the voices of the murdered, three of the six million Jews whose lives were cut short by the Germans and their collaborators, who wanted not only to destroy them, but to obliterate their very memory. For over six decades, Yad Vashem has dedicated itself to gathering their names, piecing together the lost tapestry of the Jewish people. We have embarked on a vital mission, using new innovative approaches to uncover the names of those who have no one to remember them. People have submitted information in over 20 languages, mostly handwritten. We had to develop uh, sophisticated search and retrieval tools to enable our uh, experts to examine the data, to look for nicknames and related names, and to cross-reference the information. All this in order to make the information understandable and accessible to everyone who is interested in looking for information today. Over two million more names were collected due to extraordinary and complex detective work. Over the years, Yad Vashem researchers and historians have studied tens of millions of documents from the Holocaust era. They have examined them, gleaning name after name of individuals, families, and sometimes entire communities that have been destroyed. Over four million names have now been memorialized in this extraordinary book of names, now on display at the new permanent Jewish exhibition, Shoah, at the Auschwitz-Birkenau State Museum. The only book of its kind in the world, it is a monumental work with 58 volumes, 140 pages per volume. A beam of light shines out from the binding, illuminating the names, highlighting all that was lost. Six million Jews were murdered in the Holocaust. Nearly two million remain anonymous. Yet efforts continue around the clock and across the world to fill these empty pages where they will be forever remembered. We will not rest until our mission is complete. Ladies and gentlemen, I now welcome to the stage the chair of the American and International Societies for Yad Vashem. Please welcome Leonard Wilf. Thank you, Mike. Good evening. It is with great pleasure that I welcome you to this year's tribute dinner tonight. Before turning to this evening's program and theme, I want to acknowledge the presence of Dr. Miriam and Sheldon Adelson, true champions of Holocaust remembrance and education, and Yad Vashem's esteemed patrons of the Mount of Remembrance. We are so delighted that you are with us again this evening. Tonight we gather to commemorate 70 years since liberation of the concentration camps and end of World War II. As we remember the millions of Jewish victims, we also honor the survivors who bore witness to the unspeakable atrocities committed by the Nazis and reflect on the challenges that we face 70 years after liberation. We speak of liberation as if it were the end of an evil time and the beginning of a life on a unending happiness. It was not. It was a difficult time for all survivors of the war. The absence of a home to go back to and the absence of a family to go back with took its toll on people who were readily, already physically and emotionally spent. They had been living in terror for too many years to be able to comprehend liberation and what it meant to each of them personally. It took another 10 years for Yad Vashem to be established in the state of Israel. Survivors had to be confident of their own future before they were able to look back and process the nightmares of their past. They would go on to rebuild their lives, their families, their careers, and through their dedication to the cause of Holocaust remembrance, establish Yad Vashem as the Jewish People's Center for Holocaust Remembrance, Commemoration, Documentation, and Education. 
For all that has been accomplished by the American Society for Yad Vashem in support of this singular and inspiring institution, it continues to be our sacred mission to educate our children and our grandchildren about the dangers of anti-Semitism, intolerance, and hate. As the world of survivors diminishes, it is imperative that we focus on our own goal of educating future generations so that we will never forget. My deep appreciation to Mark Moskowitz, our dinner chair, for his care, commitment, and skill in planning for this event and ensuring that this would be another stellar evening. I would be remiss tonight if I didn't recognize the contributions of Isaac Shraga Meckel, who's here with us tonight. He served the American Society for Yav Vashem with distinction as our National Development Director for almost 18 years. During his tenure, he was instrumental in raising countless millions of dollars in philanthropic support for Yav Vashem's inspiring work. He leaves behind many accomplishments, not to mention big shoes to fill. Our deep appreciation and best wishes go with him for much success, good health, and happiness in a new chapter in his life and career. Thank you, Shraga. <laughs> now, I would like to welcome and introduce Dorit Novak, Director General of Yav Vashem, who brings greetings and a message on behalf of Yav Vashem in Jerusalem. Thank you. Dear Rose and Phil Friedman, the honoree, dear Lenny Wilf, the chairman of the American Society for Yad Vashem, the dinner chair, Mark Moskowitz, our dear patrons of the Mountain of Remembrance, Sheldon and Mary Edelson, and our speaker, Wolf Blitzer, dear friends and partners, good evening. Seventy years ago, the gates were opened and the war ended. It was the end of one of the most horrific events in the history of humanity, in the history of the modern world. The hidden assumption that modernity, enlightenment, and education would bring forth a moral and just society collapsed. Right after the end of the war, humanity promised never again, and probably meant it. Unfortunately, as we look at the world today, instead of never again, we are facing again and again and again. We all know that the struggle to prevent such atrocities starts with remembering the past. The struggle for the memory become more and more challenging. We encounter phenomena of hatred, xenophobia, Holocaust denial, both soft and, ag and aggressive, and, due, and new anti-Semitism in contemporary forms. Two days ago, the world faced evil, even, evil again. Avner Shalev sent a letter of identification to our friends, friends in France, in French society for Yad Vashem, and he wrote, together we painfully realize that 70 years after the, after the conclusion of the Shoah, evil remains a powerful force in the world. As it gets tougher, we are more determined than ever. It is our duty and commitment to those that were murdered and to those that survived, and even for those that were not yet born, to keep the memory alive. These very days at Yad Vashem, we are collecting letters written by survivors immediately after the, the war ended. One of these letters was handed to me by a friend. It was written by Milek. Milek was born in Bialystok. He was a Zionist and was lucky enough to make Aliyah before the beginning of the war. In Israel, he joined the Jewish Brigade, and as the war ended, he was sent to Europe to take care of survivors. From the DP camp he was, he was serving in, he wrote to his brother in Israel. And I will read just part of the letter. My dear Mordechai, he wrote, 
Listen, my pal. I've reve revealed the cards, even though they are hard, bitter, and cruel. I'll admit shamelessly, Mordechai, I don't know whether I've stopped feeling, stopped understanding the meaning of tragedy, or maybe my sense of emotion has lost, lost its edge, or maybe my heart has turned to stone. I looked my, at myself again and again, writes Melek, and asked, dear God, is that me? Only a day or two ago, I could burst into tears while sitting in the movie theater as some tragic picture flashed by on the screen. And now, I can sit hours and listen for, to the oral stories about children who were decap decapitated along with elderly and ill who were thrown into furnaces, about people who lay in bunkers for years until their legs rotten, etc., 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 and all of, it, all of it as if it has nothing to do with me as an individual, as a person, as a Jew. It's as, uh, it's as though all those stories are legend and not painful and brutal reality. Indeed, you have to be that way here to work, to do the work you are doing. Otherwise, you'd could spend even, you couldn't spend even one day here. Otherwise, you would have to jump into the sea and tell this filthy world to get lost. I've got no place with you if this is your true face, writes Melek. At the end of the letter, he added, and yes, he said, he writes, I admit, I admit sh shamelessly, I fell in love with a girl from Lodge. Really sweet and at the same time wretched because we haven't had enough chance to meet often. Obviously, I am no less wretched than her because of, on that account. Milek came to Israel right after his experience at the DP camp. He got married with Nomi, this sweet girl from Lodge, and they had a son, Tzvika, named after the name of her father that was murdered in the Holocaust. A few years later, 1956, when Tzvika, their son, was less than two years old, Milek was called to participate in Sinai operation, Mivza Sinai. Milek was killed in the battle, in the battle, while he was serving as a, brig as a head of a commander of a brigade of an artillery in Gaza Strip. The letter of Milek was found by Tzvika, his son, only a year ago, after Nomi, the sweet girl from, Lo from Lodge, passed away. Passed away. The letter described the love, the love story that emerged from the ashes. The story of Naomi and Milek represent the tragedy and the pain and the will, and as well as the hope and the strong will to heal, to feel, and to love. For the memory of all those that experience the tragedies and succeed in moving on, rebuild their lives, had children, and through them send a message of hope. We will do everything to keep the memory alive for them and for future generations. And I conclude by quoting the Jewish poet Shaul Tranichovsky. Ki od ha'amin gam ba'adam, gam beruchho ruach az. For I still believe in mankind and in his spirit, strong and bold. Good evening. Thank you.